Hi, welcome to Manas Shiel YouTube channel. Before we start kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Let's start the video. If you haven't watched the previous video, I link it in the description box, or you can click here. Tensor Volume 20 Chapter 1 The First Battle Al Ari Enforcement Now, Phobio and Esprit are now one, and their existence values are also added to each other, so they have increased. However, it is less than a million, which is not much more than that of Peleid. Even so, thanks to the much better performance than before, they were able to compete with them. One of the reasons for this is that Phobio does not care about his physical injuries anymore, since Esprit has started to shoulder the damage. And he doesn't care about physical exhaustion either. Phobio has decided to stop worrying about the various problems, and has changed to a full-throttle combat style, giving up the long-term battle once and for all. Of course, such an action would shorten the time limit of the active battle. Nevertheless, the reason why such a strategy was successful was that Esprit was complementing Mana. Phobio's bestiality has three stages. The first is the normal Magin form. This is the most balanced form and the least burdensome. The second is the leopard-headed Magin form. The second is the leopard-headed Magin form, which is specialized for fighting and is versatile. The third is the fully animalized form. It is the fastest in terms of speed alone. However, it is not suitable for combat against humans, as it cannot handle most of the skills it has been trained for. Phobio is now the most powerful leopard-headed Magin form. He is not feel efficient, and his body is damaged when he exerts his full strength. Phobio had been fighting with a cautious approach, always controlling his power and releasing it at a moment's notice. Even when damaged, the beastmen could manage because of their high regenerative ability. However, it was not good for long-term battles because it consumed stamina and mana to maintain such a high level of regeneration. Now, Phobio is able to put all these concerns aside and concentrate on fighting. His lost hand was regenerated, and he was able to use his full strength. All thanks to Esprit. Esprit is protecting Phobio by taking his soul into his mental body. This is made possible by Esprit's unique skill discerner. With this skill, Esprit can have a connection beyond time and space with those whom he knows, and he can control the soul more perfectly by using it together with the satanic contract. As a result, Esprit will suffer a lot of damage, but that is about it. She showed her devilish nature and endured it with all kinds of resistance. However, what hurts is hurts. Really, I don't like bugs. Direct attacks on the mind and pain nullification are meaningless. The advantage of Insector over demons is the accumulation of each of these factors. Because of the worst compatibility, Insector always wins if the players are of equal strength. With these unfavorable conditions, Esprit's damage is quickly accumulating. Nevertheless, Phobio is still alive and well. At Esprit's expense, the game remains competitive. And there was one piece of good news. I knew it. They are more persistent than I thought they would be, but now I know why. Esprit explains. It seems that she is specialized in magic and damaged by Carrera Sama's magic, after all. I thought there was no way she could repel such a huge magic with no risk. Carrera's Abyss Annihilation has the power to destroy even a planet, depending on how it is used. Esprit thought that there must be some kind of anomaly since he had received it head-on. She was not strong enough to prove it, but she was finally convinced by possessing Phobio and making full use of Deserter. So, if I target the weak part, can I win? That's impossible. It's only because they are weakened that they are less aggressive, but their defenses are ironclad. But, on the other hand, it would be good for us too. Hearing Esprit's answer, Phobio is silent for a moment. Then he lets out a heavy sigh. I guess we'll just have to keep running until reinforcements arrive. It is a regrettable and unwilling conclusion, but it is the only one that can be reached. Phobio gives up and concentrates on Peleid's movement to fulfill his role. Forty minutes passed. We worked hard, didn't we? I'm too tired to talk. I can't do it anymore. I'm really going to die. Though wounded to the bone, Phobio was still alive. Esprit, who is protecting his soul and taking the damage, is barely conscious. Esprit is very satisfied with the result, since she had thought that 20 minutes would be enough. However, it was a result of giving it his all. Peleid, on the other hand, is in good shape. Her movement was even better than at the beginning of the battle, which meant that she was recovering from the damage inflicted by Carrere. Strategically, it is a great victory, but tactically, it is a defeat. But that's alright. Both Phobio and Esprit have done their part. Damn, I'm so disappointed that I got a girlfriend too. What's wrong? What is it? Is that why you worked harder than you expected? Well, I praise you for exceeding my expectations, and as a reward I'll take your message to her. 
Since he can't get up anymore, all he can do is wait for his death. So, they make light talk with each other. Phobio wants to enjoy the memories of Gabu whom he has come to know, but his spree prevents him from doing so. Are you the devil? Yes, I'm a demon, what's wrong? It's sad that you don't get my sarcasm. I'm troubled by your praise. I didn't compliment you. You're not complimenting me. Well, I guess you're right. Through this intense battle, the two had become casual conversationalists. And so, while drowning their fears of death and the humiliation of defeat, they wait for that moment. But, without moving her face, Pelid holds out his hand. The magic activation organ, which had been destroyed by Carrera's magic, has been restored, and Mana can be operated more efficiently. Phobio, who is lying on his side and unable to move, can be dealt with in a moment. Pelid waits joyfully for Phobio's scream of death, not thinking that Phobio and his friends are talking lightly to each other to prolong the moment. Pelia does not feel any respect for the person who has made her so difficult, but only pursues the pleasure that his instincts demand. The dense compressed mana rays from Pelia's fingertips do not pierce Phobio, but cut into the ground. A hot goblin leaps out from Phobio's shadow, grabs Phobio's leg, and throws him down. And then... Hey. Isn't my appearance perfectly timed? A voice echoed through the battlefield. The owner of the voice was the well-known Gopta. He had rushed to the scene as a reinforcement to break out of this critical situation, and he had arrived on the scene with a full heart. Gopta was not the only one to arrive. Gabu, a red-haired beauty in a scarlet military uniform, caught Phobio as he flew toward her. She caught Phobio firmly with her breast, and she was moving backward to protect him from Pelid's attack. Phobio thought to himself, I've done it, but that is a secret. Renga, who appeared at the end, stood in the front to protect Gopta, and threatened Pelid who was trying to pursue him. Without any hesitation, he succeeded in delaying Pelid's movement by performing the apocalypse howling. Thus, Phobio and his spree, who had been inhabiting Phobio, had a narrow escape from death. Back in the body he had left behind, his spree gets up with a start and says, Oh, my god. Oh, Gopta-sama is the best. I knew you would come to save me. His spree, his eyes are shining brightly, is actually a fan of Gopta. Oh, really? I'm so embarrassed. As the four heavenly kings, please show us your good looks. Esprit is trying to flatter Gopta. She was not trying to stir things up, but she was serious from the bottom of her heart. Well then, when this battle is over, we'll go on a date, Gopta said. Gopta was on a roll at this point. Oh, I'm ready for that kind of thing. This was a point that should not be misunderstood, since it was not a feeling of liking or anything like that. Esprit also left the front line, leaving Gopta with a drooping head. Thus, the collapse of the front was averted by the efforts of Phobio and Esprit. After a change of players, the battle was brought to the third round. A few moments after the opening of the battle, several inviolable areas were formed on the battlefield. In these zones, battles between transcendentalists are taking place, and those who are not strong enough are reduced to dust just by approaching them. Above the battlefield, the one-on-one -on -one battle between Milam Four Heavenly Kings Free and Insect General Torin was becoming so fierce that nothing could stand in their way. The Heavenly Kings and Milam's guards had no choice but to watch from afar, so as not to get caught up in the aerial battle between the two heroes, which left even the speed of sound behind. The same is true for the flying bugs under Torin, who are spreading out in wide disarray in their ranks. Thus, the battlefield in the sky seemed to be left to the two heroes to decide the winner, but this was clearly a mistake. Looking at the battlefield from a bird's eye view, only the forces of one side continued to decrease. Shishi shishi. You're weak. You're good at this, you just run away. At first, Free went on the offensive. But after she was evaded by his signature claw attack, he was on the defensive. No, she had attacked several times, but they were of no use to Torin, and she did not seem to be a threat. If she was serious about this, it was safe to say that he was an enemy with nothing to see but his speed. Of course, Torin was not the kind of guy who would let his guard down, which was the reason why the battle had lasted this long, but it was the beginning to think that it was time to end it. Oh, you see it that way. Then you should thank me. What? Torin tilted his head, not understanding what she meant. He was the one who should have been the one who had been cornered, but Free's expression showed a definite smile of composure. Thank God. You're an idiot. What? What do you think is the most important element in battle? Speed. Well, you're right. Free agrees that speed is the most important factor. At the same time, however, there was another factor that should not be forgotten. It is not based on physical ability, but on intelligence. In other words, it was the way of fighting. When two fighters of the same level of ability clash with each other, the outcome of the fight depend greatly on how they think about fighting or not. In this case, the current situation proved it. Free knew that the fight would be prolonged as soon as the first shot was evaded. 
Therefore, she thought that it was important to take only the enemy's physical strength without fatiguing him, and she played the role of a fighter seeking optimal efficiency. This tactic was not limited to herself, but also included her subordinates. In other words, Free controlled the situation of the war to her own advantage by involving the enemy forces in the aftermath of the battle between herself and Torn. Free's special feature was her intelligence in using Torn's power to drive the enemy army to the brink of destruction. This is Free. This was the true nature of the cunning Sky Queen. Free laughs at him, and Torin finally realizes what's going on. What? You've been after this thing since the first time. Well, what do you think? You're cocky, but I can't get a scratch on me, so I'm the one who's going to win. Torin, enraged, accelerated and closed in on Free. However, Free was right. Torin's aerial attacks are so troublesome that the Demon Lord Seed class cannot even see them, but Free is a different story. If you watch the game many times, you can see the pattern of Torin's attacks, and even the predicted point of attack can be calculated based on Torin's initial speed. It is dangerous to make assumptions because some of the strongest players ignore the laws of physics completely, but in the case of Torin, she had confirmed that he is bound by the laws of the cardinal world. That is why I am going to tell you. The assumption is dangerous. I'm a coward, so it takes me a long time to be sure. When Free finishes, Torin arrives at the expected position. What Torin notices is the pain of the nails piercing his chest exoskeleton. Torin's exoskeleton, which is a metallic sheen, is not as strong as his alienium fist. If that were the case, adamantite would be strong enough to pierce it, and the result was the current reality. Huh. Torin is upset, but it is already too late. He tries desperately to resist, but none of Torin's powers are activated. As soon as Free's claws grabbed him, the game was already won. In Torin's chest, which was pierced through, there was a magic core that was important for the insect magin, Insector. Free's claws are clutching it. So, goodbye. Torin's magical core is broken successfully. This was Torin's death. Lucia and Claire congratulate Free. Good job, Free-sama. Well done, Free-sama. We'll now get down to the serious business of mopping up. Free nodded gracefully. Yes, please. I'm tired, but the battle is still going on. I don't think I have time to rest either. Free looks around the battlefield. She looks around the battlefield and sees her comrades who are struggling. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy it.